Hi, and welcome to the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Podcast. My name is Kristen Jones, and thank you so much for joining me this week. We recently, here in the Breakthrough Emotional Eating community, had a masterclass, and the masterclass occurred uh, the beginning part of this week, and um, it was on eating to satisfied. And it's one of the major, kind of the major components of of the program that I teach and how I teach people not only to lose weight, but to manage their emotional eating and just to improve their lives in general. And um, one of the things that it got me thinking about was just our lives in general. Like how do we, how do we, how do we make our lives what we want them to be? And you can say like, oh, you get the right job or, oh, you, you, um, you pick up a hobby or you find the right partner or you, you know, do this, do that. And all these things are about the outside and are about things that are circumstances and that are situations that are outside of our control. But what can we do personally with ourselves, which as a reminder, the only person that we get to control is ourselves. We don't have control of anything else outside of us. What can we do to up-level our lives and to make our lives better? And so that's what this podcast is about. So I'm going to give you three things that you can start doing immediately to up-level your life and improve your life and make your life even better than it is. If your life's not so great right now, it's going to bring it up and improve it. And if your life is amazing, it is going to make your life extra amazing. So three things that you can do to improve your life today. Now, how does that relate to emotional eating? How does that relate to losing weight? Talk about it all the time. If we are not feeling good about ourselves, if we're not feeling that we are taking the lead and our, and our thoughts are generating positive feelings and then generating actions that are going to get us to whatever the results are that we want. When we don't feel good, we don't make good choices. We don't think good thoughts. We don't, we don't, um, we don't end up making good decisions about what we're going to do. Does that mean that we change a negative thought to a positive thought? No, because life is 50, 50 life is going to be half positive, half negative. We're going to have negative things happen in our lives. And that is a part of life, but what we can control is the, the, what we can control is how we come at our lives and what we then, the actions that we take within our own lives, not about controlling other people, but what we can do within our own lives. So I'm going to give you three very, very specific things that you can do. And actually even more so more things that you can do to actually make your life even better than it is now. So if you are listening on the podcast, welcome. Uh, you are, you have found the Breakthrough Emotional Eating Podcast, which is live right now, being telecast live in the Breakthrough Emotional Eating community on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash food breakthrough. And we want to make sure if you're not a member, come on over, join the group, become a member, super supportive community, amazing group of, of ladies who are all working towards managing emotional eating and losing the weight that they want and just having a better relationship with themselves and with food. Super, super important and always something that we're all striving to work towards. So it's great to be part of a community where everybody is kind of moving in the same direction. So what are the three things that you can do right now to make your life just a little bit better or up-level your life, as I like to say? So the three things we're going to talk about today, the first one, Oh, so hard. It's oh, it's so hard. But I'm going to give you some really specific things that you can do. First one, stop taking things personally. Everything. Stop taking it personally. It has nothing to do with you. Okay? So that's the first thing. Second, find more self-cultivated joy in your life. Self-cultivated joy. That means it doesn't involve anyone else. Joy needs to come from within, not from anybody else. So self-cultivated joy. And then the third, always come from a place of love for yourself and for others. Always, always come from a place of love. When you do, 
your whole energy, everything changes in your life because you come at people in a way that makes them much more receptive to you and, and makes you open to learning about them. It puts everybody in such a great, great place. All right. First one, stop taking things personally. So if you're in the Facebook group, if you wouldn't mind, if you are in the Facebook group and you have read the book, The Four Agreements, if you've read the book, The Four Agreements, just put your hand up, <laughs> just do a little hand raise or say me that you've read The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements is an amazing, amazing book. I have to get the author's name because I always forget which order I'm supposed to talk about him. I believe it is it is Don Miguel Ruiz. I always in I always reverse the Ruiz and Miguel. So it's Don Miguel Ruiz, and it's called the Four Agreements. And the second agreement is don't take anything personally. Okay, don't take anything personally. So there are I'm going to give you four, actually five, five things that you can do to help yourself to stop taking things personally. And I will tell you, I lived more than half my life taking responsibility for everything. Everything was, was a personal attack against me. Everything was done to hurt me. Everything was done to, to belittle me and to make me feel less than. And the only person who was making me feel that way was me. I remember I, remember I was 20 years old, 20 or 21, and um, a friend of mine uh, an older friend of mine said something to me one day and he said, you know, Kristen, you really overestimate your nuisance value. And I was like, what do you, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, back up. I'm not sure. Is that an insult? And of course I took it personally. I was like, well, what do you mean by that? I was super defensive. And he's like, you think that like you're the center of everything and that everybody, everything that everybody does is about you. He's like, I hate to tell you, but it's not. And, I, and, and, and at first I was like, oh, like I was so offended. And then I thought, oh my God, he's totally right. I mean, it's so, it's so true. And how often do we think that things other people are doing are directed at us and they have nothing to do with us, nothing to do with us. So I've got some really, really direct things that you can do to help yourself to stop taking things personally. The first one is question your own beliefs about things and the way things are supposed to be done. Too often times we have in our minds because of how we were raised or what we think, a belief that we have, we think that everyone should feel the same way we do. And if you don't, and you don't do things exactly the same way I do, then I'm going to get my panties in a wad and I'm going to get upset and be angry with you because you've done that purposely to try and hurt me. No, people are just living their lives. They're doing what is true and authentic and a belief and a value of their own. We are not going to have the same values of everybody. And we have to start letting that go. Hold on a minute. Stop. I digress. Sorry, my very well-trained dog decided that he wanted to whine. Um, so the um, we have to stop. We have to stop inflicting and in, and imposing our own beliefs on other people. Doesn't mean we have to change them, but we have to. As much as we want to have our own beliefs, we have to let other people have their own beliefs. So an example: if I if I say if I if I you know I'm walking on the street. And I look up and I make eye contact with someone and I say hi to them and they don't respond back to me. That has nothing to do with me. That could have to do with, I don't know what they're going through. They could have something else in their minds. They could not feel comfortable saying hi. They could have some sort of trauma going on. They could just decide that they, they, were, they were raised that you don't say hi to a stranger. That's not anything about me. I don't get to get upset. I mean, I can if I want to, but that's a waste of time to get upset about what somebody else is doing merely because it's not in alignment with what my beliefs are. So we have to stop trying to control other people's behaviors by inflicting our own beliefs onto them. Secondly, stop worrying about what other people think. My favorite line, and y'all hear me say this all the time, 
Someone else's opinion of you is none of your business. You don't need to care. They can have any opinion they want. They get to have it. It's theirs, but you don't have to believe it and you don't have to buy into it. And if you choose to, that's on you. You've decided to take their belief about you and adopt it as your own. Be independent. Have your own opinion about yourself. Third, be too busy to care about what someone else is doing. Be too busy to care. Make your life so amazing that if somebody else wants to do something that you ordinarily will take personally, you got too many things going on in your life to worry. Okay? Make your life, make your life the best that it can be. And that could be possibly doing these three things. Four, stop giving your power away. Other people do not get by nature by birthright, they do not get to have any power in your life. The only way they have power in your life is by you giving it to them. And if you are so, if you, if you take something personally that someone else has said or done, you are just handing them all of your power. You're giving it to them. And then most likely you're going to get angry that they have it. Well, you know what? Shame on you. That's what you did. (laughs) You did that. So we have to be responsible for that. We have to be responsible and say, no, no, no. Nobody gets to have my power. Nobody gets to take my power. That's not, that is not going to happen. So stop giving your power away. And the last thing, don't drink the poison. If somebody has said something or done something and you decide that you're taking it personally and you're making it about you, you are buying in to their poison because if they've said something that's been hurtful, they're coming from a place of pain, a place of unhappiness, and you're jumping right in with them because you're getting right down on their level. So in a quote from uh, the the book of the Four Agreements uh, by Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, he says, even when a situation seems so personal, even if others insult you directly, It has nothing to do with you. And I say this too, what they say, what they do, and the opinions they give are according to the agreements they have in their own minds. Taking things personally makes you easy prey for these predators, the black magicians. They can hook you easily with one little opinion and feed you whatever poison they want. And because you take it personally, you eat it up. Don't take anything personally because by taking things personally, you set yourself up for suffering for no reason. Even if others lie to you, it's okay. They are lying to you because they are afraid. There is a huge amount of freedom that comes to you when you take nothing personally. The whole world can gossip about you. And if you don't take it personally, you are immune to all of their gossip. And when you don't take the emotional poison, it becomes even worse for the sender, but not for you. You don't, when you give in, they get a rise out of it. They get something out of it. When you resist and don't take it personally, you have denied them the reaction that they want. And that's what you want to do. Don't give them what they want. Okay. So again, First thing to make your life easier, stop taking things personally. Again, we just don't need it. We just don't need it. And it's too much energy, too much negative energy that we don't need to expel. Second thing, find self-cultivated joy. I cannot tell you how frequently I ask people, I, I will ask clients that I'm working with, Like, well, what brings you joy in your life? What makes you happy? And they can't answer. They don't know because there isn't anything. And usually when it's a weight loss client, the thing that brings them joy is food. And that's why this piece is really important. If the only recognizable joy that you have in your life is food or someone else, 
you are always going to be dependent on your joy coming from outside of you. And the only thing that we can ever count on and we can ever rely on and we can ever be consistently dependent on is what we have inside of us. If we're always looking to the outside, things outside of us are always fleeting. They can always go away. They can always disappear. And I don't mean for that to sound harsh. I don't mean mean that to sound mean. People leave. People die. Situations change. You lose your job. Your husband leaves. Your friend dies. Your child dies. Those things happen. We have to find joy in ourselves and in what we create in, in, in our, in ourselves and in our own activities and thoughts and beliefs and all the things in our lives. But we have to know what makes us happy, what brings joy into our lives. And it can't be someone else doing something with us or someone else doing something for us. And that makes me happy because then we're giving that power away again. So we have to remember we have to find the joy within us. We have to know what what is going to make us happy. And if you're sitting here listening and you're like, I have no idea, that's okay. That is okay. But it's something for you to dig into and it's something for you to journal on. And when I say journal on, I and somebody asked me for suggestions on journaling and and how do you start how do you how do like what is that supposed to look like? I'm like, get a piece of paper out. Get a get a, get a Get a spiral notebook, you know, a little, little spiral notebook, they, you know, 99 cents at the dollar store and, and just start writing. What makes me happy? When in my life was I happy? When, it, what brings me joy? You know, and when I say something outside of ourselves, like, you know, it, it more importantly, what, like, we don't want to, we don't want to have it be dependent upon a person. But like if music makes you happy, if knitting makes you happy, if making crafts, if, um, you know, for me, running makes me happy. Running brings me so much joy. Exercising brings me so much joy. I love, I love that. I love what I do. I love my job. I love coaching people. I love helping people. Like those things bring me joy. Now there's tons of other things bring my joy. My, my nieces and nephews, my family, but I need to have that, that self-cultivated, what am I creating? What, are, what is the joy that's gonna, that I'm responsible for that I get to create in my own life? So that's, that is the question to ponder. So I'm gonna ask in the Facebook group right now, if you know one thing, because I think it'll spark people's ideas. If you know one thing that brings you joy that is not dependent upon anybody else, but that is something that you can create. What is that thing? So Denise says working out. Kathy says reading, drawing, and dancing. Absolutely. Gardening. All of those, those are beautiful things. So again, if you're in the group and you you can think about like, what brings you joy? What brings you? And those are the things that we want to cultivate. We want to have more of that joy that we're creating because that's empowering. Crafting, love that. That's empowering for us. We're doing what we want to do. Playing the piano, puppy socializing. I love that. Organizing, listening to a playlist while walking, cross-stitching, coloring. Oh gosh, you guys are so good. Yep, absolutely. Floral arranging, biking, walking, so many good things. So lots of ideas, being out in nature, hiking, all the things. So lots of ideas there for you, but think about what is and what, and maybe it's something that you haven't thought of. You're like, oh, you know what? That could be something that I really like. Maybe I'll try that and try something new, but, but be open to that. Be open to how can I cultivate that joy in my life? How can I be responsible for my own joy and not have to look to others? Because again, it always is going to come back to us. The only person that we're ever going to be left with for sure, 100% is ourselves. All right. Third thing, always come from a place of love for yourself as well as for others. Always come from a place of love. And when I say come from a place of love is always try and lead with love. 
lead with love, lead with who you truly are, your true authentic self. And when I say that, I mean like, you know, if somebody like, for instance, that person who doesn't make eye contact with you, when you say hi and they don't acknowledge you, coming from a place of love is like, oh, something must be going on with them. I'm, you know what, let's say a quick little prayer for them. Or, or somebody has a hard day, somebody maybe that you care about. And you're going to think like, oh, gosh, I hope everything's okay. Instead of, oh, how rude. Instead of, well, how about we all just start thinking, gosh, I wonder what they need. I wonder if there's something going on. I wonder how I can help. Always coming from a place, always think the best until you're proven otherwise. And then even when you're proven otherwise, still think the best. Because we know that people do the best that they can in any given situation with the information and the skills and the trainings that they have. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but everybody's always trying to be their best and trying to do their best. And that is what that's leading with love. That's understanding that, you know what? Everybody's trying to do the best that they can. So instead of assuming that, you know, someone is doing, again, that taking it personally and then coming from a, that aggressive place of like, oh, that was so mean. That was so awful. How about we just always think, wow, wonder how I could help. Wonder what they need. Maybe I can't help, but maybe I can just send some really positive energy their way. I send a positive thought, a positive prayer, whatever it is. But putting that type of energy out, putting that type of vibration out, up levels everybody's vibration. It makes everybody feel better when we are coming from that place of how can I, how can I uplift? How can I help someone as opposed to, oh, they're bringing me down. Oh, this is terrible. You know, how are they, how are, again, it goes back to that taking it personally. Lead with your heart and lead with love. Always assume the best, assume love, And always try to come from that place until proven otherwise. And then even in that case, still double down on the love. Because that ultimately, I always believe that when when people strike out and act aggressively, they do that because they're hurting. Because something, there's some sort of pain going on. So because it always comes back to me and my dog. Um, As I was talking on the podcast before, before we started recording, I was telling him a story about my dog going to dog camp. And one of the things that I learned, and this is honestly what I learned from the trainers that I worked with was that when dogs misbehave, like humans, when dogs misbehave, they do it because they, they're lacking confidence. They're lacking belief in themselves and they feel that their environment is out of control because they're leading their environment. Dogs do not want to be in charge of their environment. They want their owners to be in charge. They want their owners to be telling them what to do. They want their owners to set parameters. I wasn't doing that. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't have the skill to do it. And so I needed help with that. And that's what I got. And the change in my dog is so significant because he feels secure. He feels safe. He feels loved. He feels protected. Where before I loved him and I tried to keep him safe, but he didn't feel that way. And so he was very aggressive and very, and not not aggressive in a, in a harmful way, but he was aggressive in a sense of, of, of how he presented himself because he was trying to put on the front, like, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm the big aggressive dog. He doesn't need to be that way anymore. He gets to be himself. He gets to be the sweet, kind, loving dog that he is because he doesn't have to act that way. And we're the same way. Humans are exact, you know, humans, humans are exactly the same way. And so we want to have that safety, that protection, that kindness, that love. And we need, and we need those behaviors. And so that's really, you know, it, it, it really is true that, that, that we, we all need that. We all need to come from that place of love and that feeling of being protected and being understood 
and and being safe and being having their parameters set for ourselves. And that's parameters that we set for ourselves. So again, it doesn't always come back to my dog, but lots of times it does. Um, so I hope that I hope that kind of explains things. But again, the three things, the three ways to up-level your life, make your life just a little bit better. And again, this always contributes and can bring in the management of emotional eating and the, the, ma the management of your weight is to really put your life in the best possible position that it can be in. So again, let's stop taking things personally. Let's lead with love. Let's find more self-cultivated joy that we create, that we empower ourselves and that we bring into our own lives. So hope that was helpful. Um, if again, thinking about the stop taking things personally, gave you very clear steps as to what you could do. Again, making sure that you, and again, it all comes from within you. It's all about your thoughts. It's all about what you need to be doing for yourself. Figuring out what are the things that are going to bring me joy? Look around at what other people are doing. Is that something that would bring me joy? Can I try something new? Not being set in our ways. Let's try something new. Try something new to bring joy in your life. And again, always lead with your heart, lead with kindness, lead with understanding. And, and, and sometimes that kindness and understanding, we do have to walk away and that's okay. But we do it from a place of love. We always lead with love and we are always our true authentic self. All right, y'all. I hope that was helpful. I hope that kind of gave you some things to think about. Um, if you are, again, if you are not a member of the group, if you are um, listening on the podcast and you're wondering what the group is, Breakthrough Emotional Eating on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash food breakthrough. And again, my PMs, my private messages, always, always, always open please do not ever hesitate to send me a message. And if you have a question, if you have a concern, if you want to know what it looks like to work with me, if you want to know what it, what it, you know, how to get to the free resources in the group, just send me a message, send me a message and let me know and ask, ask, I will absolutely connect you and hook you up with whatever it is that you need. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I love these th Thursday podcasts because I get to wish you a fabulous weekend. Um, enjoy yourselves. Have a great time, lead with your heart, don't take things personally, and bring some joy into your life. Okay, all right, take care everyone. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all next week.